With Lord of the Rings continuing to sell out, it really shouldn't come as a surprise in today's video that the singles market is at unprecedented levels of movement. And they are all Lord of the Rings and they are all over the place. When we go through today's video for the top 10, we have a lot to cover. Not only the hottest selling cards in Magic, that's great, but we have to discuss the after effects of what happens 90 days from now. How much can the market really absorb and what are going to be the after effects of a product with this amount of sales already before the real release even happened? Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. And this is a really a time we've never been in. I've never counted higher sales in the top 10 than what I'm going to show you this week. This is one of those areas where you start to wonder on the MTG finance side of things, how many speculators just jumped back into the market on FOMO alone? Because the numbers are massive and they are not a single person buying this many copies, even though these prices are falling. Even though the cards themselves are cheap and easy to get, when people are buying hundreds of copies of a single card in a single shot, that tells me something. When stores are telling me they are sold out of individual singles that they've opened from collector boxes, this all is information that you can add together to say it's not the norm. We are not just sitting down having some nachos and cheese on a regular Saturday afternoon. That's not the world we're living in. The FOMO, the grip, the sales volume, the hype, whatever you want to call it, it's everywhere. And I'm hearing it day in, day out. After the video went live yesterday, a whole bunch of stores that are not people I get information from started feeding me some sales data. It is worse than I expected because most of them are sold out too. And it was two issues. We had low inventory due to low pre-sales. That hit a whole bunch of these stores. Okay, I, well, three out of five. And the other two stores only ordered enough to satisfy their local market, which was like, you know, 20, 30 players. So they bought a couple of boxes of each and that's it. They sold out. They're done. They're getting ready. Can you believe this? For Commander Masters. The singles they had in the store are already gone. They're telling people to go on things like TCG Player. They're telling them to go to Card Market, um, Card Kingdoms, bigger cities like, like Toronto, as well as places in the States, which I was told not to name, so we're not going to. Now, when you look at this on the MTG finance side of things, it all looks bad. The market cannot normally sustain this level of hype for a long period of time, which tells me that within the 90 day period, these cards are going to fall down. Like the uncommon Nazgul being eight, nine, 10, 30 bucks, whatever craziness they're showing you, it is ridiculous to think it's going to stay at that price. Secret layers will come. The FOMO should wear off and people have just got to not be a Timmy about this and think it through. A lot of them aren't going to, a lot of people will. The prices are going to fall. They cannot sustain, and you'll see when we go through the video, if you've watched any of my top tens, this will blow you out of the water and you'll be wondering what's going on. But it is the hype. This is one of those moments, we talked about it earlier in the week, one of those moments that's gonna go down as just a banger. People are going to have great nostalgia for it. They're going to remember this stuff and they're going to say, where were you when you went looking for serialized rings? Whether you like it or not is irrelevant. It happened and it is happening because the sales and people on wish lists trying to get more collector boxes. Who puts that on a wish list and can afford to buy multiple boxes? This is where we're at right now, people. And it's crazy. So let's get to the top 10. We've talked about this. We know things are going to fall. I will go a little bit faster for the top 10 today just to keep this video at a reasonable length of time of under 14 minutes for this kind of stuff. But let's, let's talk about this as we go through and let's take a look at some of these cards and you'll see which ones are the most popular and I did discuss some of them earlier in the week. Let's get this party started. So here we are starting out with Shilom. Now this card is at number 10 but it has 2,394 sales. The average price for this card is $2.29 US. All prices today are in US dollars. The market price is $1.62. A foil is $2.30. One euro, six cents to get this card to your house. And it's around three bucks here in Canada. 
Now, I'm not going to go through all the powers and abilities of these cards. I'll leave them on the screen for a second so you guys can read this stuff. But the idea that this is a rare is, you know, two bucks doesn't seem very unusual. But the sales volumes are. Nobody should be buying 50 copies of this card and spending $100 on a single card. Why do you need 50 copies? What's the idea behind it? These are speculators jumping back into the market on the hype of what's going on. It is not the norm and it is something people need to be aware of. The prices will fall if these speculators can't get money and flip things. Now, number nine, this card I did not think was going to be on the list, but apparently a whole bunch of sales happened at the last minute, and that is Barrett Dur. And again, there's all Lord of the Rings. 2,893 sales June 17th to the 23rd. Average price, less than a dollar. Okay, this thing's less than a buck. But take a look at this and remember, the mana base has got to be paid attention to. It is a legendary land. Comes into play tapped unless you control a legendary creature. Well, in a commander deck, that's going to be everywhere, especially if you're using a red-black like I do, and it costs basically zero. You just put out your uh, Rogoth or Kirk, Kirk Keep, the little zero guy, and get this thing out. Now, it has double X and black, a mass orcs, X. Activate only if a creature died this turn. Think about the uses for a card like this as a get a blocker out, sack a creature, get creatures going. This is an insane little combination of things you can do. I actually, by the way, like this artwork. I'm surprised the card made the list, but that surge, it had like about 1,200 sales in that last 24-hour period, and that's just insane. It, I didn't think it was going to make the list, but when people are buying copies of this card for, let's say, 40 cents on TCG Player, and you're buying... 100 copies at a time, it's it's really no surprise, okay? And if any of these cards catch, I mean, somebody could make money, but it's just such a high rate of volume that I don't think it should. There should be enough copies to go around that it should not be that difficult to get these. So I don't expect any price spikes, but who knows with things this high. Now, Delighted Halfling. This is a card I knew would be on the list. I'm surprised the price is actually starting to uptrend, okay? People are actually seeking this card out, buying 20, 30 copies at a time. That is hundreds and hundreds of dollars for this particular card. And when you take a closer look, you'll see why. We've talked about this already in the past. Um, it's a good card. It's going to have a lot of uses. People are going to enjoy using it. Notice the little citizen thing there as well. Those kind of combinations with other things work very well. 3,104 sales, though, is a tremendous volume. We are already talking thousands and thousands and thousands of copies. And that just blows my mind. This card is averaging $14. The market is $9.56. A foil is $13.99. And it's $17 Euro to get this card to your house. $18 bucks here in Canada. This stuff is really high up there, guys. Now, the Shire, again, I thought this was going to be around the number 10, 11, or 12. Like, I wasn't sure if it was going to make the list. But a lot of sales happened. This one's going for around a dollar US. $0.90 cents in the market. $1.05 US if you're looking for a foil, $11.80, no, it gets a whole mix of copies there for the euro, so ignore that price for now. And here in Canada, it's around two bucks. When we take a look at the Shire, and again, food decks are going to be around, okay? People like to try things out, but the FOMO and hype we're seeing with this, it's not going to be the norm and it's not going to stand, okay? A leg of this table is going to break. Things are going to slide off the table and they're going to be cheap because they fell on the floor. Lightly played is what we're going to be seeing here. But 3,462 sales is quite a volume of sales to see. Now, number six this week, Minas Tirith. And again, 3,858 sales. And this is the number six card. It only gets worse from here. This one I knew would have value and expect this card actually to maybe rebound within the 20, 30 day mark, depending on how people play and use it. Average price, $3.12 US. The market price is $2.80 a foil, $3.46. It's around five bucks here in Canada, four euro 44 cent to get this card to your house. And again, it's the, not the fact it comes to play tap with the legendary thing. Legendary creatures are gonna be so readily available in the next upcoming sets. There'll be low casting cost ones that make these five colored lands from Lord of the Rings fit in very nicely. But all these secondary abilities, like this one here where it's one white, one generic and tap this land and draw a card, but only if you attack with two or more creatures. Those are very small things to get out of the way. There's ways of working around it to make cards like this function. So I'm not surprised that people are picking up copies of this card for future commander decks. Now, number five, Rivendell. I knew this card, again, I liked it since the very beginning. 
4,087 sales this week. It's less than a dollar already. This thing started in the pre-release prices of like eight, nine bucks, been collapsing ever since. Lots of copies still readily available. But again, it's just like the other cards I talked about. People are buying 50 to 100 copies off of a single sale. And that's just crazy stuff to see happening. It is a decent card. It, it will get played. It does have uses. Scrying 2 is pretty cool if you control a legendary creature and a very cheap scrying ability at that. Put that in with my Soldevi, Castle Vantress, uh, maybe, uh, what do you call it, uh, Ancestral Knowledge in there. We can really jerry-rig a deck to fit some phenomenal playability. You should try those combos out. They're really good, and they're all cheap, which is amazing. Now, let's, like, that's 4,087 sales. Let me show you number four. Here is the Orcish Bowmaster. And guys, this card is not cheap. This isn't a dollar card. So the people buying 100 copies of this card, that is, you're talking $3,400. Think about this. This thing had 4,872. That's how many sales happened in the sales volume week. You can see the average price is $34.50. The market is $21.86 and it's $38.50. 30, sorry, $38.37, and then of course that's for the foil, and then €26.73 to get this card to your house. Here in Canada, this card's anywhere from, I've seen it as low as $25 on pre-sale, which they got sold out really quick, and as high as $40 bucks and some actually sold. This is some really, I mean, it's going to be a good card, but I'm not sure it warrants that price tag yet, so I would wait to see if they do like secret layer stuff. I just don't think the price will hold at this level, but apparently there's a lot of disagreement because people bought it a lot. Now, number four, Call of the Ring. Again, this is a cheaper card, makes sense. 5,142 sales this week with an average price of $5.67 US, but a market price of only $2.37. Now, these are, of course, for different versions of the card, overall sales volumes. I've seen this card as cheap as three bucks in Canada already. A foil at eight bucks makes sense to me. I love the disparity in the, in the foil price. Now this card is an enchantment, one black, one other. And it says at the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life. If you do, you draw a card. The ring is mine. Excellent guys, great card, great stuff. It's gonna see play. Um, I don't know how much in the long run, but the short term, people want to try this stuff out. Now let's check out number two, and that is the Mines of Moria. I know a lot of people thought this was going to be number one. Um, it is number two this week with 5,683 sales. This card is only, again, it's $1.36 US. It's 95 cent. And then, of course, you got $1.27 US for the foil. One euro, 81 cent to get this card to your house. Two bucks here in Canada for Mines of Moria. And there's a reason why people have been buying this card. This one makes more sense to buy multiple copies if you don't think it's coming around. And that is, of course, the uh, Exile ability, okay? The one red, three generic, exile three cards from your graveyard and create two treasure tokens. Unless they can get rid of your graveyard, they can't stop you from doing things like creating treasure tokens, which can cast bigger things. And I actually like this imagery as well. It's very nice, very thought-provoking, um, very creative. So this was your number two card. Now let's... Let's check out the number one, okay? Kind of a surprise. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And that is the flowering of the white tree, and it's the extended art. 6,120 sales plus. I had to stop counting. I had to get sleep. I apologize to everyone. I wish I could get a more accurate count, but the data coming in uh, from the people who give it to me was a little bit later, and I ran out of time. So this is the closest I could get it for everyone. Um... I will do a count later. If somebody wants to know, they can just hit me on an email. I'll be happy to answer. Maybe I'll put it in a, in a questionnaire or something. But the average price is $6.05. The market is $4.90 US, €7.20 to get this card into your house. And of course, this card has uses. As a two white legendary enchantment, legendary creatures you control get plus two plus one and have ward one. That's a nice little pump up. Non-legendary creatures you control get plus one plus one, kind of like, you know, Crusade back in the day. This is a very good card. It's going to see a lot of play. It has a lot of uses, and I can see why people are buying it. And when people buy four copies of that, it makes sense. When you're buying 30, 40 copies, I don't know why. Speculating on this stuff is dangerous. I'm telling you guys now, anyone who's speculating on this, it is dangerous to do this in this volatile of a market right now. The prices are not going to hold. You have to have people to sell to. When you're buying 100 copies, you have to be able to move those. So I don't know exactly who is doing it. Nobody's come up and emailed me and said, hey, I did this.
but that's what's happening. I can see in the data when I see 100 purchases from one source. That's crazy stuff. So thanks a lot for hanging out with me, guys. This was your top 10. This is what's happening in the marketplace, and it is a wacky, wild world of sports right now. I... I can't wait to see what happens with the reserve list this weekend. You can tune in tomorrow for the reserve list top 10. Looking forward to seeing you guys all there. And of course, the live stream Sunday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. And if you're buying any of these cards on TCG Player, please remember to use my affiliate link found in the description of all of my videos. If you click on that link, it'll take you right to TCG Player for your shopping experience. And the channel here gets a kickback of 3.5%. Appreciate everyone who takes the time to help out the channel. And of course, my amazing patrons, you help out every day. You guys are awesome. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me and allowing me to entertain you once again. We'll see you all tomorrow. Big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons of the channel who support each and every day. You too can become a patron of my channel. Go ahead and check me out on Patreon. There are a few slots open if you're interested in joining. So thanks again, everyone. The patrons make it happen. Thanks all my patrons. Wow. I'll be honest, guys. I'm crazy tired. That's a lot of counting. And here we are at the end of the video. And all I'm thinking about is, man, my bed's going to be so comfy when I fall asleep. Because <laughs> then I have to get up and get the next videos ready for tomorrow. Crazy stuff, guys. Those sales were insane. Um, I'm a little concerned. Between all of us here at the end of the video, it's concerning with those sales volumes. They should not be that high. There's going to be something bad happening. And if it doesn't, if something bad doesn't happen, wow. Wizards won't care either way, by the way. They don't care. They've already got their money. People opened it, cracked it, they sold it through distribution. They've made their money. So they don't care. It's a green light for them, but it could be a red light car crash for a lot of these people holding singles if they're thinking of speculating on them. Pick up the cards you want, have a good time, save yourself some money. Prices are going to fall 90 days or less. All right, guys, thanks a lot for hanging out. See you guys soon. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Go to sleep now. Go to sleep.